Coming up on the House of Takes pod, we are going to cover the DeAndre Hopkins signing by the Tennessee Titans. I'll tell you what I think that does to the uh, New England Patriots hopes for even sniffing the playoffs in the upcoming season. Plus, uh, Steph Curry actually wins the American Century Championship on uh, the 18th hole with an eagle. Uh, Yet another great sports moment provided by one Steph Curry. We're going to talk about that and uh, some things that are still happening in your National Basketball Association offseason. Bull Bull actually has found a new home. What will happen with James Harden? And personally, I still can't believe that Christian Wood and Kelly Obrey Jr. are both still on the open market. That's what's coming up on today's House of Takes pod. I'm Dave Dubois. Uh, Thanks so much for tuning in. Hey, listen, uh, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet to the big channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. All right, enough of the groveling into the content Uh, We go um, to the National Basketball Association. We go. We are going to start with the fact that the Phoenix Suns just don't care anymore, do they? They are going to try to sign just about anybody that is, quite frankly, a unique style basketball player to fit in with their team. I personally have always thought that Bull Bull just hasn't really gotten a chance Uh, to excel in a place in the National Basketball Association. I was flat out shocked that he got released a couple weeks ago. And I was also flat out shocked that nobody else picked him up. Uh, Look, uh, Bobo actually does have some skills. I'm not saying he's going to help put the Phoenix Suns over uh, over the hump, so to speak, into a National Basketball Association title. But it is a good hiring, uh, excuse me, signing for the Phoenix Suns regardless. Um, In the uh, association, there are two key players who, quite frankly, I just can't believe haven't received a uh, contract offer yet. Now, there's rumors going around about both of these players. Uh, Christian Wood. And I don't know, like if you were the GM of a basketball team in the National Basketball Association, wouldn't you want a guy that's probably going to get you like 18 and 10 a night? Look, I know Christian Wood has had some uh, team issues in the past, but 18 and 10 is really um, uh, is really just solid numbers for the association. Plus, Christian Wood is still fairly young for his age. Being a young, then you have Kelly Oubre Jr., uh, one of the more difficult names for me to pronounce for some strange, bizarre reason. But last year with that terrible Charlotte Hornets team, he at least averaged over 20 points a game. He had 5.2 rebounds. We're not going to talk about his assist because I don't think he's ever seen an assist that he actually likes. But Kelly Oubre Jr. is another player who, if your team needs scoring, he would be a great addition to your basketball team. So I'm surprised to see both of those players still sort of uh, sitting out in the winter, if you will, waiting to get picked up. Finally, in the association, as we know, Damian Lillard, that whole thing is happening. Nothing new to report here on that. Um, really, the new, uh, newish sort of story of the past week has been the James Harden, uh, basically his camp leaking that he still, uh, despite the beautiful white party that he attended uh, over the 4th of July weekend with his, uh, uh, what he hopes soon to be former teammates, he still doesn't want to play for the Philadelphia 76ers in this upcoming season. My personal opinion on this, is that he doesn't like Nick Nurse. Uh, We we know he had issues with Doc Rivers, um, and uh, if he had issues with Doc Rivers, you know he might end up having some issues with Nick Nurse. Now, Nick Nurse historically has been a fair basketball coach. However, I could see, like if you know anything about Nick Nurse and then you know anything about James Harden's personality, I could definitely see them not working well together. 
this whole situation is just an absolutely ridiculous situation, which of course James Harden is entirely responsible for. This should not be happening to the guy that led the National Basketball Association in assists last year with 10.7. Look, I, I know that James Harden, the basketball player, is, you know, on the backside of his career. I know that James Harden, the basketball player, hasn't always shown up in the playoffs. I know that James Harden, once he gets his mindset on something and related to leaving one team and going to another, then James Harden usually eventually finds his way into actually getting his way. He's... He's like a little kid screaming for ice cream. And as a parent, you eventually cave. While you'd rather not, in this particular situation, I'm not sure that the Philadelphia 76ers have a real choice other than to try to make this happen for James Harden. This is certainly gives the Los Angeles Clippers, which is his preferred destination, um, an absolute chance to land James Harden at least for a season and not actually give up too much. Look, uh, James Harden with the, this Los Angeles Clipper team, I've been talking about this Los Angeles Clipper team for the last four years. We've all been saying for the last four years, and I quote, if they can stay healthy, that should be the uh, new name of this team, if they can stay healthy. Because we all know they won't stay healthy. Then you're going to add an aging James Harden to this particular team as well. How many games do you think that Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and James Harden will actually play together if they're on the roster for the Los Angeles Clippers for an entire season? I bet the over-under on that in Las Vegas has to be under 20. So I love James Harden. I still think he's got a lot left. He still is less injured than the other two players I just mentioned in Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. And I think he'd be a great fit with the Los Angeles Clippers who are just 12 months away or 16 months away from moving into their brand new, beautiful uh, home in Los Angeles, the Intuit Center Forum Stadium, whatever it's called. It's sponsored by Inuit and it's absolutely beautiful. I was in LA uh, last year and got to see the uh, construction going on. Um, and it is an impressive uh, arena uh, built on the backside of Microsoft dollars. <laughs> uh, way to go, Mr. Steve Ballmer. So we have that going on in the association. Hey, uh, tell me what you think. Drop in a comment. Um, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel and um, if you're listening to it on uh, any of the various podcast networks, certainly feel free to uh, send over a message as well. Look, the House of Takes channel is uh, really uh, less than two months old. Uh, we have uh, we're closing in on 800 subscribers. Uh, four days ago, we would have said we're closing in on 700 subscribers. So thanks for uh, all of your support. we uh, starting to gain a little bit of traction here on the House of Takes. All right, um, we're going to talk about Steph Curry here in just a second, but I did want to slip in a quick National Football League story. And that story it revolves around one DeAndre Hopkins who has gone out and signed a deal um, to become a member of the Tennessee Titans. Uh, good old DeAndre Hopkins signed up for a two-year deal. Um, he's going to get somewhere between $26 million and $32 million in those two years. The, the breakdown on this is basically in his first year, he's going to get $12 million guaranteed, and then there's another $3 million in Tennessee Titan incentives. <laughs> That's like a Kmart blue, uh, blue light special, I guess. Um, so he's going to have those incentives. And it's basically the same contract, uh, a little bit slightly different for year number two with the Titans. It's just a, it's just, you know, he's when healthy, he's just really still one of the top five wide receivers in the National Football League. And it's an absolute must move by a team that actually legitimately believes they could do some damage in the playoffs in the upcoming season. I mean, I guess the biggest issue in Tennessee is 
Do you really believe that uh, that Ryan Tannehill is the long-term answer? And are you going to come to that conclusion during the upcoming National Football League season? Or are you going to wait and waste another year of DeAndre Hopkins' career finding out about a quarterback who clearly is probably not going to be able to uh, put a team like the Tennessee Titans on his shoulders and carry him all the way to a Super Bowl victory. But at the same time, just a great move by the Tennessee Titans. In addition to that, what does that do for the new cheapskates in the National Football League? That's right, the New England Patriots did it once again. I mean, when you look at these two rosters, <laughs> the, the Tennessee Titans actually on paper have a better roster than the New England Patriots. The Tennessee Titans have also had offensive coordinators for the past two seasons. We know that uh, Bill Belichick thought he was uh, the smartest person in the world when he decided to take a defensive coordinator last year and turn him into an offensive coordinator, which was an absolute mass destructive move by Bill Belichick. It is, in fact, even put Bill Belichick, believe it or not, on a bit of the Budweiser hot seat, hasn't it? Look, does Bill Belichick have to get things turned around this season before Robert Kraft actually makes that tough decision to officially call the Bill Belichick era over? It is a real possibility that Belichick and the New England Patriots organization made a huge mistake here by not giving DeAndre Hopkins a similar style contract. I am willing to bet that DeAndre Hopkins, if he had received something similar to what the Tennessee Titans gave him, probably would have gone with Bill Belichick. As we all know, Bill Belichick also has a new offensive coordinator this year, who DeAndre Hopkins is actually very familiar with, who they have accorded to Hopkins and Bill O'Brien have buried their hatchet and were on the same page if they were to get together in another city once again. That was a huge, an absolutely huge mistake and probably sealed the fate of both Bill Belichick's uh, later stages of his career, as well as the, um, the possibility that the New England Patriots could go on some sort of run in the, the upcoming playoffs. Without DeAndre Hopkins, their opportunity to even sniff, to even sniff the upcoming uh, National Football League playoffs might be pretty difficult for them. Uh, look, I'm not trying to bash on Belichick or bash on the Patriots. It's just that when you have one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League, still with a lot left to give, and you don't make a real offer to him to bring him onto your team makes absolutely no sense to me, especially when you do have the cap space uh, to get it done. All right, and our final, our final story on our House of Takes uh, pod uh, today. Uh, you got? Uh, is there anything seriously? Seriously, I I'm asking. Now, is there anything that Steph Curry can't do? I <laughs> like I, I want to know. I really want to know. Is there anything that Steph Curry can't accomplish in his career? As Steph Curry has done it, he has won the American Century Championship in South Lake Tahoe, um, and he did it in Steph Curry uh, walk-off fashion. Yeah, yesterday, in case you missed it, he had a hole in one, and and today. Um, he was down. Um, now they play a modified uh, uh, point scoring system um, in this particular golf tournament. So he, he had an opportunity to just flat out win the tournament on an eagle putt on the 18th hole today. And Steph stepped up and drained essentially that eagle putt. It was uh, seriously one of the more amazing moments in the world of sports that I have actually seen in quite some time. Um, Steph just continues to uh, uh, to, to amaze. Uh, hey, tell me what you think about Steph Curry 
um, in his second profession, uh, the uh, uh, celebrity golfing tournament experience. Um, it was uh, an amazing sight um, to see. All right, that is it for uh, this Sunday's uh, House of Takes. Hey, in case anything happens with Damian Lillard, we recorded this, finished the actual recording, probably get this published half, uh, half hour or 45 minutes from now, but we finished the actual recording at 528 PST. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet to the House of Takes pod, please uh, go ahead and do so. For the House of Takes pod, I'm Dave DeBaugh, wishing you all a tremendous rest of your sports viewing. Yeah. Okay.